Roma Termini. Can you see it behind me? I'm typically very much a planner, meticulous. I know where I'm going, where I'm staying, what I'm doing months in advance. Well, I've fought that here on this particular European adventure. I bought a train ticket to Verona. It's a lighthearted, a bit silly pilgrimage, and we'll get there, maybe. I haven't planned what comes next. The idea is to cross the Alps. Will I get there? I, I don't know. And this is the way, as they say in something that relates to this pilgrimage. As this old man who looked like he might build Pinocchio tomorrow in Orvieto said to me, it's not about seeing new places, going new places in travel, it's about seeing with new eyes. Okay, long day of travel. Oh, almost there. Don't know what's next, really, because the rain is coming. Man, the weather doesn't look like it's gonna treat me very nice, but c'est la vie, as they say in France. <laughs> of course you have to delay it. <laughs> Welcome back, Nico. Welcome back to the show. <laughs> Thank Everybody, you. Everybody, you remember Thank this you. guy? My one night in Verona, uh, wondering what neighborhood are we in? Uh, Borgo Venezia. And here we are again in Nico's kitchen trying special liqueurs. Cheers. Liquor of the monkey from Barcelona. From Barcelona. Oh, it's good. Minty, minty. My mom sometimes do it when he find it. Yeah, they call it Herba di Nelson, but it really is Luigia. He says he doesn't remember the Papa Reale. We're going to go back in time now to the Papa Reale. Where are we going, Nico? To Cerro Veronese. What is it? It's a place where we're gonna buy the, your papa reale. Miel ovo. Miel is, is honey. It's honey plus egg plus oh, miel ovo. papa reale. And maybe, it's, maybe cream? Or yeah, maybe it's gotta have some, it's some delicious. Cream. It's a little mini pilgrimage to get the one thing that I wanted to pick up in Italy because this thing is made only at this place. It is their recipe, you cannot find it anywhere else, just this place that we're going. Thank you, but so sad. <sighs> Very sad, Nico. Very sad. This was one of my favorite things from that I remember from visiting him. Papa Reale is what the the bees feed their babies to make them grow. So very nutrient rich, yes. right? What we learned is that the man who found this recipe, which he found a way to take all these different things that go in here and keep them from separating, keep them creamy, he died eight years ago. His work, the workshop, he, they just changed it, turned it into an apartment and sold it off. And so that legacy is gone. But we did buy this now, which is another legacy of a, a monk or a priest. Priest probably. Uh, from this area, went on a mission to Madagascar. Yeah. And he, was a, he is a beekeeper. I'm gonna I think, have. I think he he bring the bees close to the trees, but they are wild trees. Okay, wild eucalyptus trees in Madagascar. He bring the bees there, and they make their honey from those eucalyptus trees. Yeah. This is very Italian, huh? Yes. It Tell is. us the story, Nico. We have to do it to have white wine. Maybe two, three, four glass okay. from ten to okay. twelve. Right. Then we go for lunch. Very yeah. very Italian ah. thing. Prosecco is um, from Veneto, yes. Prosecco bubbles. The Italian champagne. No, 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 no. No, no. 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 okay. <laughs> Italians <laughs> arguing about wine. <laughs> <laughs> this is the famous, like, champagne is the famous French bubbles. This is the famous Italian bubbles. Right. Italian bubbles, yep. yes. Okay, chef. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is why I do not <laughs> eat tiramisu in the United States. <laughs> Rosanna, show us the way. Questo a Dustin. Ah, this one is for me. <laughs> Truly Italian mother making tiramisu, how lucky am I? <laughs> mm, little light. The truth is, dinner with Nico's parents never would have happened if I would have booked in advance. Because I wanted to book the 3 o'clock train, but I waited and I waited and I ended up taking the five o'clock train, which gave us just enough time to go to his parents' house and have a wonderful four-course dinner that 
is the kind of Italian experience you can't pay for. But now, but we are in Austria, the pretzel bread. And finally, a big coffee. Going to see if I can get to the top of these mountains here in this cloudy day. Uh, and there's cable cars all over the place. One of them goes way up to the top, at the top of Innsbruck. I don't know, I came very unprepared. That's kind of part of the story here, um, to be unprepared and allow for things to surprise you. The privilege of a pilgrimage. I don't really know where I'm going. I'm just walking down the story about pilgrimage, but this is the truth about travel too. It should be confronting. If you're not being confronted with your own sort of discomfort and yeah. way of being, worldview, or just like how to order a damn coffee because you don't speak the same language, well, maybe you're not doing it wrong because maybe it's not about right and wrong. Oh, but darling, here comes the sun, maybe for a few moments. And as I walk on this pilgrimage, thinking, looking at people, people watching, this simulation is all about training you to be a companion of the gods, to be a god yourself. And that every single person that you run across is an incarnation of you. And so I am he as you are me and we are all together, we're all one. Whether or not you subscribe to this philosophy or not, I'm not sure I do. It's interesting to stand here and watch the world go by and say, oh, that, that's me. Identify with them. What is that? Where is me in that? You will always feel this feeling of being a tourist because you're always doing something different, new. You're going new places or trying new experiences or looking through new eyes. I stop for a moment, I check my phone, I don't know where I'm going, should I make sure where I'm going, I want to go to this lift up to the top of the mountains, is the lift open? There are multitudes of them. Stop trying to control the situation. And up here, there are giant mountains, but you can't see them. I stop to think about the story that I'm telling, this wander west that I'm on. As I think about wrapping things up or coming to some sort of conclusion, if hell is made of fire and lava, then perhaps heaven is made of ice and snow. And so, though you cannot see all of the epic mountains around me, though they be there, maybe this is a metaphor for our lack of vision and the things that surround us that we are unaware of as we test ourselves in the ice and snow of life. Hey man. The snow looks good in your beard. <laughs> yeah. What's your name? Jesse. Jesse, where are you from, Jesse? From India, but I live in Germany. Anything to say to the people? Uh, it's pretty cold out here, but a lot of fun. Yeah, you exactly. That's, that's a metaphor for life right there. Yeah. It's cold, but it's fun. <laughs> Ciao, man. This is the way. This is the way. <laughs> well, I will follow you guys then. Yeah, this is worse, yeah? Yeah, this is much worse. Yeah, exactly. But you can't see anything from top. But you can say you've done it. Yes. <laughs> and this is something, isn't it? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, I am at the top in the heavens, not the Alps. And though some might say, boy, what a disappointment. I can't see anything. Perhaps it's just a matter of seeing things differently. This is a cool spot. Going to take the public transit back to the city center, which looks more like I'm entering the hive of a alien species or something. I've decided to rent a car out of the Munich airport tomorrow. Uh, there is the one place. There's one place that I'm headed. This this magical mystery pilgrimage uh, that we'll get to. Maybe or maybe not. I hope. I think that's the way we're going. Now I have a car, so it should it's, it's going to happen in Germany at the airport and now to travel back south. I am now in the town of Garmisch Parkenkirchen. Garmisch Park, Garmisch Park, Gar Garmisch Parkenkirchen. But I really don't know. Uh, and this is a, like a ski town, I guess. It's maybe a little walk around this little village here on the edge of the Alps. You see this little peak behind me? The sun is back out or trying to be back out so i'm gonna go check out this little lake over here holy shit definitely having a holy shit moment finally seeing the alps for real like 
Oh, ah, oh, just majestic magicalness. <laughs> like, I feel like this is my first, you know, moment of the mountain majesty. Yeah, it's these holy shit moments that after several days of coming into the Alps, crossing the Alps, and being in the mist, you know, I can't deny that I felt some sense of disappointment for not being, for being lost in these clouds that are now returned quite a bit here. But once you get it, and maybe waiting for it, it's just like, oh, it's like a drug. It's, <laughs> it's a powerful feeling. Wow, look what the universe did. Look how beautiful this planet is. God, I love the sound of a waterfall. The clouds have returned, the rain has returned, but night is coming soon. Well, my action cam has died, but I think I have seen more rainbows in the last three days than I have in my entire life combined. As if I could reach out and touch it, it's so vivid. But I wanted to share this moment with you and just say, oh, I just go be a part of the magic. <sighs> traveling, traveling, traveling. I spent most of the day in a train, to another train, to the airport, to rent a car, to drive back down south for two hours, to wait in the rain, to finally make it here. And there's a thousand reasons not to be here. But man, I am just, feel a sense of honor to be here right now. I suppose it's not really important to know where I am, and I thought, <laughs> hey, if this is something you want to find, you will. It is now the final day, and when we carry on to the culmination, what I've been reminded is that it, it's not about the destination, but the journey. That very unexpected hike around the lake that almost didn't happen. And how absolutely cute is this little hat in the mountains? Whew, well, I'm just riding along on the highway and I look up to the left and atop the, atop the hill, this very steep hill is an epic castle ruins. And I just think, well, how, how did they do that? What is this song? Uh, Lithuanian ethno song, uh, ancient one, like okay. from the pagan times, okay. about the mountain. Oh. But I just decided to pull over and there's a bridge. Can you see it? Like what? You see that thing over my head? That's a walking bridge, but we're going to go to the top. We will sing for you in the next stage. Yes, you will. Okay, I will follow you then. <laughs> I mean, living for the holy shit moments. And now we howl like a wolf. Oh! Traveling with my new friends. <laughs> Liatova. From now on, I'll say it the right way. Not Lithuania. Liatova. Wow, what an absolutely magical and mystical and cultural thing to meet the Lithuanians at the castle just by happenstance. How cool, man. Now on to the destination, which I've been in the destination this whole time. But maybe now is a good time to talk about this pilgrimage, where we're headed. It's a bit of a, a, a silly uh, pilgrimage, a storyteller's pilgrimage, if you will, because this place that we're going is what inspired one of the great storytellers. Yes, Walt Disney, but there's more to this story. It's not just about Disney. It's also about this mad king, so they say, who built this castle in the late 19th century when castles like this weren't being built. You know, he wanted to dream of the glory days when Bavarian kings, when, when Austrian kings could build such things. So it's just like this strange museum. What this has become, people didn't know at the time that it would become such a destination for people. 
I am following along this maze of life, this wonder, these holy shit moments, so I can have some inspiration, some aha, some wow. Well, as it likely should be, it's the wettest of my experiences here on this pilgrimage. There will be no wondrous pictures because we are in the clouds, surrounded by the mist. But you can't take pictures inside. But if you want to experience it, I can't vlog it for you. But what is even more remarkable to me than this castle is the journey to this castle. And there is no ending, there is no destination, there is only continuation. And my story goes on. But interestingly, Walt Disney borrowed a lot from the Brothers Grimm and European culture, whose fairy tales don't always work out so perfectly. And I'll end this story with some reality, which seems appropriate for reasons I won't get into, but I'll let this story tell itself.